Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I apologize for the lack of videos. Uh, life happens, you know, get busy with family, especially these couple of months. Uh, rarely find, I can find time to sit down and just uh, talk to the camera anymore. But I, I ran into a very interesting use case, which might be obvious, but uh, it's a parameter in a Linux box that turns your machine into a router. And uh, funny enough, I have used this parameter, it's called IP forward, in many of my videos before, but I never paid attention, you see, to to how exactly it works. So I want to take, I, I made a few, a couple of slides to kind of go through how exactly that thing works, you know, and then how, forwarding an IP is, what it is to begin with, and why do you want to enable it, and how does it exactly work. So let's jump into it. So let's go through this uh, few slides that I created. How a machine becomes a router. So we're going to explain the Linux IP forward, you know, parameter. So you see, if a machine C in this particular case want to send a IP packet to machine A. Well, you normally don't in, in programming, you don't really send IP packets like in Node or Go or C, you know, you never actually craft an IP packet. It happens behind the scene by the TCP IP stack in the kernel. You just say, hey, I want to connect to the server and I want to send some, I don't know, a get request, right? But the, eventually everything that you send, quote unquote send, becomes an IP packet. And in this particular case, there is a piece of data here that I omitted. The destination IP is placed here. The destination MAC address is placed. The source MAC address and the source IP address. And as long as you're in the same network, you will almost always address the MAC address directly, you know, in the frame. So that's what we're looking at a layer two frame. And I talked about all this in, in my many of other videos and also my networking course, if you're interested. So, so here I am, I am representing these machines as if they are connected directly, but they don't have to, you know, think of this like as, as part of a Wi-Fi network. If I send something like a frame in the Wi-Fi network as radio waves, pretty much any device listening to that channel, to that Wi-Fi channel will get the frame. It's this puppy right here that tells you, hey, uh, that's not for me, drop it. Right. And that's basically what happens here. That's what I'm going to talk about. So this machine Mac address is a, so it does get that frame and expand it. Right. So that's layer two that are at the, at the most physical layer. So first, first there's the radio wave or the electric depends on the medium ethernet or fiber or electric. But then layer two becomes like, oh, I'm matching. I have a match here. Poof. Okay, that's for me. The next step is I unpack whatever inside this thing and I look at the destination IP address. Is this really for me? And the answer is yes, this is my IP address that is matching. So this IP app packet is for me. So there are two addresses that you need to verify as a machine when you receive a frame, right? the MAC address and the IP address. Cool, that's for me. So that's what the first case. The second case is when you send a frame uh, and another machine happens to get it, you might say, how? Well, it's as we said, Wi-Fi network, even if you're a part of a hub, right? Or a switch that doesn't have that knowledge that there is a, another machine on the other end yet. Right? So a frame is destined to make its way to you, to the NIC over here, but the MAC address do not match. So in this particular case, you say, uh, my MAC address is A. You are sending me D. So that's, the, that's definitely not for me. So you drop it right there and there. So that's a quick check. And usually this check is happening not only in the kernel itself, right? Not in the kernel, not in the operating system. It's a very fast check done in the NIC software right here, right? In the network card. It's like, oh, that's not me. Drop it. 
right? So, so you don't even you don't even reserve a kernel memory to copy this frame into the kernel to actually check that if that's you. You don't do that, right? Or well, you have to do that if you if that's if you are matching, because IP stuff IP TCP IP has to be done in the kernel. So you have to copy it in the in the host memory. But for NIC, you don't have to, except this mode is called promiscuous mode if you enable this mode then the kernel tells the nick hey uh, any frame you receive please forward it to me as the kernel right don't even if it's not for you that's okay why because this machine might be acting like a uh, i don't know it's sniffing it's like i'm sniffing all packets right uh or another way is uh, i'm really I really have a lot of virtual machines with a lot of MAC addresses here, right? That's not my not me matching your physical MAC address here, but one of them might be yours. So just don't don't worry about it. The hypervisor will say, "Hey, just send it over to me, and then I'll take care of the filtering at at my case." So there is an additional cost you pay here. So that's the other case, right? The MAC address doesn't match. So the next case, and this is the case where I want actually want to talk about is. You're sending an IP packet, the device receives it, the MAC address is a dead match, so the NIC passes it over to the uh, operating system kernel to check the IP address, and the IP address is not a match. It's actually a completely different network. So we're going to 8888, in this case it's Google DNS, and but my IP address is 10.0.0.1. That means the IP address is not a match. Here, most packets, most machines actually drop because, hey, that's not for me, right? Unless, unless you tell your kernel, hey, you become the promiscuous mode of the, of the, uh, it's, I call this the promiscuous mode of the IP layer three packets, right? Where even if the Mac doesn't match, send it over, let me filter it, even if the IP doesn't match, if I have this bit turned on on my configuration, if that bit is enabled, don't drop it. Consume it, but you can do whatever you want for it, right? But then if IP4 is enabled, just send it back to the network. Just, just do that. Boof. Just send it over to the network. And that's exactly... And that's exactly what the, how the router works. You see, if you want to send something, if you're sending a packet that is outside of network, right, which is most what your laptop or your phone is doing when your Wi-Fi connection, you're always addressing out day uh, IPs outside of your private network, right? You're going to Google, going to Facebook, but in that particular case, what happens is your device will say, hey, I, this thing is not in my network. So it will put the gateway MAC address as the destination and say, hey, your gateway, I don't know how to forward, I don't know how to route these things to this packet. So my gateway might know. So it will, you will just resolve the gateway, which is 10.0.0.1 in this case, find the MAC address, do an ARP, send it over to the gateway. And in this particular case, the router will say, oh yeah, okay, that's that's for me as a MAC address as a layer two, but the destination IP is not for me. So in this case, I'll just turn around and forward it to the WAN port in this particular case, right? So it knows what to do with it, right? So it becomes a router essentially. So let's go through some examples here. So here's an example of acting like a router, right? So I am, we have two networks here, 10.0.0.2, we have 10.0.0.2, we have uh, this machine has two NICs, two interfaces. One is living in 10.0.0.1, which is this guy, this network. And also one is living on 992.168.101. Oh, so this is a clearly a router. But how does it know it's a router? Well, you tell it, essentially. So here, the machine want to send, right? Uh, let's say we have a listener here on... 192.168.1.2 and we are listening on certain port. I don't want to connect to that machine, right? So again, same thing we're going to do. All right, I'm connected to this. I have no idea where this machine at. 
right? It's outside my network, gateway, take it over. How do I know this is my gateway? Well, when I connected to this network, the DHCB told me that, hey, by the way, this is your gateway. So anything outside your network, talk to it, talk to it. And talk to it, basically saying, hey, put the MAC address addressing to it and we'll we'll take care of the rest so we're sending this over and the machine a will get it it will match the a it will match the mac address but this won't match right because that's not your ip address right but it will say yeah i'm actually a smart device i have ip forward enabled i can actually I know where this network is, and as a result, it will send it to the other port, to the other NIC. It will forward it, it will forward that IP packet all the way to the other NIC here, and then it will forward it here. Now, you can see that the router also has a choice here to change the source IP. That's called NATing, which well, I don't want to go through it right now, but that's an option as well. But we kept it as it is here. In this particular case, we kept the source, right? But we changed the MAC address, the source MAC, so we can we know how to send it back. Now, when we want to send it to the other end, we do another ARP and we say, "All right, oh, I found you. You are over there, because I am in the same network here, so I can find your actual MAC address. So I forward you that, and you receive it. That's pretty cool, isn't it?" And you can do this with any machine. That's pretty cool. And here's another example where IP forward can be used in the same network, but as a firewall. You know, you see, when I send a Mac, uh, when I send an IP packet, and I make the gateway my destination, right? Then, if I can configure this device to receive all IP packets, right? Even if it's not for them even if it's not destined for this machine, but then do a filtration on it. It's like, all right, uh, is the port good here? Are you uh, supposed to connect to this IP address? Are you flooding the network? Are you doing a DNS that you're not supposed to do? And, and then this firewall start to check all these rules. But then if, if, if one of those rules don't pass, you actually drop the packet all, all together right there. And if it did pass, you can just forward it over to the other machine, right? Not other machine, just other network. Just, hey, just send it back to the network. So that's another use case for IP forward where you can take care of that, right? So yeah, I thought I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I hope you liked this video. And uh, have you ever used this parameter before? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. We're going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.